All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Whether you are here on Zoom with us or on the Facebook, we are excited to have you. Um, I'm excited. This is our last presentation of 2022, and it's all about self care. It's taking care of you and yours, self care for neurodivergent individuals and their caregivers. So, we're really excited to have you here. Um, this is brought to you by Kansas Lend. If you haven't heard of Kansas Lend yet, it is uh, Lend is Leadership Education in Neurodevelopmental and Related Disabilities. It is an interdisciplinary workforce training program um, here at the KU Medical Center. So we're excited uh, to bring this one to you. And tonight it is brought to us by the GNO team at KU. GNO is Girls Night Out. And I have to say, I am wearing one of their sweatshirts. So I'm supporting them. This sweatshirt says we all have things to work on. And um, yeah, who doesn't have something to work on? So I am going to now turn it over to Mallory Beckloff. She is the GNO program um, director. Awesome. Thank you, Stephanie. We are so excited that you're here with us. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your busy day, busy week to um, be here and listen to us. Um, I'm Mallory Beckloff. I'm a social worker, former LEND trainee, and the program coordinator and facilitator for the Girls Night Out GNO program. I'm Nicole Crump. I'm the administrative assistant for GNO and LEND, and I'm also a parent caregiver to a seven year old daughter with a rare disease and developmental disabilities. And I am Katie Schmanke. I am a GNO facilitator and an occupational therapy student at KU uh, doing my capstone also with GNO. And I don't know if you um, heard Stephanie say this earlier, but our presentation is titled Taking Care of You and Yours, Self-Care for Neurodivergent Individuals and Their Caregivers. And we think this is an important topic as we enter this time of year. So before you roll your eyes and say, oh my God, more self-care, that's the last thing I need. I'm tired of being told to take care of myself when I don't have time to do it. I got you, I'm there, I am you. This is not bubble bath and face mask self-care. I want this to be really realistic, accessible and meaningful self-care that actually fits into your life the way it is. We're not asking you to change, change what you're doing. And self-care isn't one size fits all. So there are things that I find helpful and that I incorporate that you might find just totally opposite of what fills your cup and gives you energy or protects your energy. So please throughout this presentation, take everything we're saying with a grain of salt, take what you need, leave what you don't. Um, we hope that you come away with at least a few helpful kernels of things that you can incorporate into your life. And also please do feel free to jump in and share your perspective throughout our presentation, things that you found that work for you or things that you say, why are you even telling me this? Because we're not experts and my caregiving journey is probably going to look a lot different than yours. Again, I professionally serve young women with autism and other um, developmental and intellectual disabilities, but my experience is more um, feeding tubes and wheelchairs and communication devices and those kinds of things. So again, different perspectives, they're all valuable, and we're just really excited to have you all here tonight. Yes, and yeah, we can't emphasize that enough, that we are not the experts. We want this to be, we are trying to create um, different ideas and suggestions for everyone watching this to individualize their own self-care plan um, into their daily life, weekly life. Um, and also um, just how Nicole mentioned her self and her experience being a caregiver, um, Katie and I's experience is with supporting neurodiverse adolescents and young adult females and their families through Girls' Night Out, which we'll talk more about later on in this presentation. I, so, I, sorry, I just wanna interrupt before you get started on this. If you have any questions, whether you are on Facebook or in Zoom, feel free to put them in the chat or in the comment section on Facebook. And I promise we'll get your um, question or comment shared. And I do want to share self care is so important, but sometimes hard to do was one of the comments we just got from Facebook. So. Absolutely. Thank you for, for sharing that with us. And we, yeah, we definitely encourage you to use the chat feature, um, share your thoughts with us and um, add to anything that we are going to say over the next hour. Um, 
So sometimes we all need this reminder, and that is that we all have things to work on. You, me, family, friends, your therapist, your dog, everyone <laughs> has something to work on. So just remember that as we're going through this. Um, so it's likely that one of us has been having a hard day, a hard week or month, or maybe sometime over the holiday season, you might feel or experience one of these things. And it can be really helpful to remind ourselves that you aren't alone. Um, so it's likely that one of us will experience feeling lost, wanting more, comparing ourselves to others, changing our minds, stressful situations, making hard choices. Um, maybe we've been neglecting basic self-care, repeating unhelpful patterns that we know aren't helpful um, for our overall well-being. And then I'm sure sometime we've all had thoughts like, why me? Why us? Is this my fault? I wish this was easier. I have, I have so much to do. Um, and just knowing that, I think it's helpful to know and just recognize like I'm not the only person going through this really hard time. Your hard day and stressful season might look differently than someone else, but as we said in the last slide, we all have things to work on. So I don't know if um, we can't see the chat feature, but if you have anything else to add to this list, please share something that we missed because I, I know there's a lot more. Um, there was another comment on Facebook that says, I often say we are all cracked pots. <laughs> I love, I love that. that. And we could all use that Japanese art of filling the cracks with gold. So hopefully mm -hmm. some of these tips can be those little gold flecks that you can fill your the cracks of your pot with. I love that metaphor. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing. Yeah, love that. I'm filling mine with platinum. <laughs> That's well you should. <laughs> Self care. So tonight, as we were preparing um, this presentation, me from the caregiver perspective and them from the neurodivergent individual perspective, we came across these common themes that we thought would run through and address. Like again, we all have these same things to work on, and so how can we? approach these core concepts through these various lenses. So just to kind of go over briefly what we're going to touch on tonight, we want to reframe the way that all of us think about respite, the power of connection, the art of saying yes, the art of saying no. Another way to say that would be protecting your boundaries, um, some simple habit shifts that you can incorporate into your daily life. And lastly, some quick grab and go self-care that you can do in under one minute, anywhere, anytime. <laughs> that don't include face masks. Or that does not include face masks or bubble baths. Yes. So I also just want to take a quick moment to say to any caregivers who are on here tonight that I see you, you matter. And I want you to know that you have the right to take care of yourself. It is in no way whatsoever selfish to take care of yourself. And if in taking care of yourself, you will have increased capacity and capability to take better care of your loved one. So I think it's wonderful that you're here and thank you so much for being here. So what is respite and why might somebody need it? Um, I found this caregiver burden inventory that I, it's old, but it's so true still. And I took it and I only had to score 36 points to indicate that I needed respite and I scored 50. Um, Respite is just a, a break, a short escape from something difficult or unpleasant. And a lot of us have a lot of difficult and a lot of unpleasant. And it's okay to need to step away from those things. Um, Kansas Department of Health and Environment defines it specifically for caregivers as temporary care that relieves primary caregivers from their caregiving responsibilities. And all of this sounds a little bit negative, like I just wanna escape my kid, but every, all of us, as they will touch on later too, every single human, need short breaks from things that are challenging, no matter what that challenge looks like. And we all have challenges. Um, and why is respite so important? Because caregiver burden is real and it can actually be dangerous. Um, social isolation, stress and anxiety, loss of income due to caregiving responsibilities, resentment, denial, feelings of overwhelm, all of that can lead to sleeplessness, exhaustion, depression, declines in physical health, self-neglect, 
and ultimately decreased capacity to provide appropriate care to a loved one. So that's dangerous for both parties involved. And recognizing that this is the trajectory kind of early in your caregiving game or at any point along the way can make a huge difference because it's not always possible to get ahead of the situation. You might already be in full burnout mode, but you can intervene at any time. And that intervention doesn't have to be a full overhaul of what you're doing or introducing a brand new form of self-care to your life that isn't realistic. It can be something really small that fits really seamlessly into what you're doing and it can totally alter the way you feel in a stressful moment. So when I first kind of was introduced to this world, I heard of respite. I thought that it was like this beach vacation and that I could drop my kid off somewhere and the state would pay for helpers and I could get away with my husband or go on a girl's trip and just be like, bye responsibilities. I need this break. Thank you. And that is not what it looks like unless you are in some rare unicorn bubble. <laughs> that this is an option for you. And so I think it's really important to be super realistic about a reframe of what respite is and can be for you and your family. It might honestly just be going to the dentist because you haven't had a chance to go in like two years. It might be having a neighbor that you are comfortable with come and be with your child for just that hour or having a peer from your child's school come sit with them or a sibling while you are even in the next room, but going to like a virtual therapy session. Um, taking the time to do things for yourself that you wouldn't normally do or couldn't normally do and identifying alternative means of access to get that respite. I also wanna challenge you here to think through why respite is, is a challenging thing to emotionally overcome. I know for myself, it was, I didn't want anybody else taking care of my kid. And it's still really hard um, to trust other people, to let go of control over situations that often feel out of our control. And when you get that limited amount of it, you want to hang on to it. But I really encourage you to have those difficult conversations with yourself and your loved ones and reflect on what makes the idea of respite potentially so scary or unappealing and identify alternative sources of help. Um, and in that vein, I when I was looking for um, re uh, resources, sorry, on respite, I found this helpful guide and it's designed by Missouri Family to Family, which is out of UMKC here in Kansas City. And it's charting the life course, a respite guide. And I think what is so unique about this is that it looks at respite and its benefits through the lens of not only the caregiver, but also the care recipient and the entire family unit. So it encourages the caregiver to engage the care recipient in conversation about the respite experience, how they can feel safe, how what they would find engaging and meaningful and what benefits they could or want to get out of that experience with someone new or a new, a new um, setting or opportunity. And I will put like a little caveat in there that for me, I can't have that kind of conversation with my child where I can fully identify that. So this is gonna look really different for every family about how you're engaging the care recipient in that conversation. But I do think it's really important to think through it as a unit. And what I love about this resource is that it includes these really concrete tools like worksheets and examples of different ways that respite could look within different families and their situations. And can you put that on, um, on yours really quick, just for yeah. a note. And I did wanna take a quick moment to just acknowledge that it's really hard to find respite in our area. Um, I reached out to a lot of contacts that I have. I reached out even to the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, thinking somebody would have just this list of respite resources and places, and it just doesn't exist. And unfortunately, unless you're a family that's currently served by a waiver, the state just isn't paying for that. And so we, I did find a lot of faith-based programs that do offer respite, and that will be a resource that I provide to anyone who's interested. It's just a list that I compiled, and I just wanna point out that it's a resource and not a recommendation, but there are things available. You just kinda gotta take that leap of faith sometimes. And I also know that it can seem really difficult and scary and irritating, quite frankly, to put a lot of thought and planning into how to make respite work for you. But if you can be thoughtful and intentional on the in the beginning, 
of what this can look like, then your entire family can have really meaningful and important opportunities to recharge. So a quick example, um, my husband and I actually had the opportunity to go to New York City last weekend, just the two of us. And it was the first time that we had a way together in several years. And I was incredibly anxious um, to the point of almost making myself ill about it. But I had a large spreadsheet. I had a lot of training sessions with family and other caretakers who are going to be involved in that experience and took that leap of faith, got on that plane, had a wonderful time and got to identify with the parts of myself that had been sort of dormant for a really long time. Um, and my daughter also had a really, really fabulous time. Not everything went perfect. There were phone calls I had and things that made me a little bit nervous, but she was ultimately okay. She got to experience people she doesn't typically experience and have opportunities that she doesn't usually get to pursue. So all around wonderful, but it, I will acknowledge that it was a ton of work to make something like that happen. So um, along the lines of respite, um, we're gonna think of it from the uh, neurodivergent individual perspective. And because it's not, the caretakers are often the ones, you know, um, planning the respite and all of those things, but it is beneficial to the entire family unit. And you um, as a neurodivergent individual should be involved in this planning, but like Nicole said, it's not always as simple as, you know, like saying what you want, um, but as finding that the way that works for your family um, and how you can be involved in that. Um, Cause really respite's just a break. And as much as your caregiver needs a break, you um, also need a break and it can lead to more independence as well, because so frequently maybe um, just because it's how it's always been, the caregiver um, is doing so much and maybe you want some more independence and there's a part of um, your life that you want to try doing on your own. Um, and so, yeah, including both uh, people, the care recipient and the caregiver in the planning is important. And just to identify what you want when it comes to respite and what makes you feel comfortable, um, however you um, that may be. So next we wanna talk about the power of social connections and I'll start with the social connections for caregivers. And if you are, Feeling safe and confident with in-person support, I really encourage you to look into resources through Children's Mercy, the POPs program that is parents offering parents support. It's a peer mentor model where you're matched with somebody with similar experience and you can have a connection with them in any way that you feel comfortable. Email, phone, meeting up, hopefully I think is the eventual goal. Um, similar programs are offered through Missouri Family to Family and Families Together. Families Together is the Kansas version of Missouri Family to Family. But if in-person support's not your thing or you don't feel ready for that yet, then local virtual support can be really helpful. And this is area specific social media groups or hashtags related generally to disability. So this could look something like Kansas City Special Needs Moms or Kansas City Autism Dads or things that are in your area that might be more general, um, but where you can exchange ideas, find out where things are happening in your community, have important conversations, look for equipment that you might need. And I also want to emphasize that it's it can be really, really powerful to connect um, with some global virtual support. If you have a specific disorder, like in my daughter's case, when we got that diagnosis, we just Googled it and found a Facebook group dedicated to the families affected by that disorder. And now we have friends in Italy and Brazil and Australia, and it's really powerful to be to feel that connected on such a broad scale for something so specific and so unique and kind of compare experiences and talk through challenges with each other. All that being said, I think what I wanna emphasize even more than that is to know your limits and you have, permission to turn off the noise of all the disability discourse that may be surrounding you. Um, it can get really overwhelming and you can kind of get so entrenched in these groups and in this virtual support community that it is just washing over you in a way that doesn't make you comfortable anymore. And it's okay to just disconnect from that for a while. And this can change throughout different phases of your life. Um, so having that self-awareness to understand when something no longer supports you, I think is really 
important too. And just in full transparency, I am currently in a season where I am completely disconnected from all of this, but there have been phases of my life where it has been the most important and the central thing to making me feel seen and heard and welcome and connected. So. Along those lines um, of social connections, we'll talk about it um, in terms of neurodivergent individuals. And first of all, the mental health benefits, and this is really for anyone of positive social connections and their association with increased mental health and well-being. Um, but really it's important to find your people and the people that you feel most comfortable and like you have a community with. Um, so it's it, it's frequent that neurodivergent individuals prefer friendships with people that also identify as neurodivergent. Um, and this can, you know, increase confidence and have increased companionship, happiness, self-esteem, and then give you that sense of direction and community. Um, but also it's important to think outside the box because uh, social in-person, especially social connections can feel really intimidating and especially like, oh, I don't have friends. I don't have that friend group. Um, but there's other options in terms of in-person. It doesn't have to be um, like a friend hangout that's, you know, what you might see on the movies or something, but different opportunities um, within your community that you can look into. And we have some supports to give you. And then also online is a great option and um, can really be a more like a preferred option for a lot of people. Um, when it comes to in-person connections, um, one thing that I think is important to recognize and look into is the right person environment fit. So we all have dis different um, sensory preferences. We all process sensory information differently and there's no right or wrong way. It's just the way your body processes it and then that leads to your preferences. And so you may um, be really bothered by loud noises or you might always need something to do with your hands or it goes on and on. So trying to recognize those um, sensory preferences and then matching your preferences with the environment and the activity that you're wanting to do within the community. So thinking if you like loud noises, trying to find a place, or it may say you don't like loud noises, it's more likely finding a place that is a little quieter and doesn't have so much loud music and background noise. Um, so things you can consider would be noise, lighting, if it's a more active or passive activity and the busyness in terms of people or colors or objects and things like that. Um, and considering the day of the week and the time of day could also help because there's places that are less busy at certain times of the day or the week, and you can try to go during those times. Um, maybe you'll feel more comfortable. And considering what you're wearing too can help if you have um, specific uh, clothing that makes you feel um, more comfortable sensory-wise or in any way. Um, and then Developing, so not always are you going to be able to find this perfect fit of environment and person. Um, so developing coping strategies to deal with um, when you are in an environment that doesn't really match your preferences um, can be super helpful. So knowing when you need to leave and need a break or knowing to bring a fidget to help you get that sensory input, things like that. And then this next page is uh, just some in-person connection resources within Kansas uh, that you might find helpful, um, different, that uh, you'll get this PowerPoint or the resources after and you can look into these. We'll share all the links. Mm -hmm. And then just one example of a way to connect in person is this program that I feel really passionate about, um, which is Girls Night Out, GNO. And GNO is a community-based social skills and self-care program for adolescent um, neurodiverse adolescent and young women. Um, this program includes both neurodivergent and neurotypical girls and young women of all abilities between the ages of about 13 to 29. Um, we aim to provide opportunities to practice relating, finding common ground. Um, we try our best to create opportunities to share, uh, for individuals to share what they're excited about, what their individual special interests are. Um, our mantra for Girls Night Out is we all have things to work on. So it's um, finding a place to feel supported, being able to share things um, 
and practice going out into the community where you're not, maybe you're not really used to going, um, especially without a parent. One thing that we really do try to, um, we say no parents allowed at GNO. Um, and sometimes that's hard for families, but it is just, even if it's 45 minutes or an hour of just practicing um, being in a peer supported um, community, but having fun and ad we're adapting things and individualizing things to help create these successful opportunities. And it provides us an opportunity to provide that respite. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah. Caregiver. Yeah. Yes, so. absolutely. And you often challenge parents to examine their own role in that and how can you take promote yourself independence. Away, promote independence for both yeah. for both parties because mm -hmm. it's hard to disconnect sometimes. Okay. And then so we know that um we've gotten a lot of feedback from a lot of the girls involved in Girls Night Out. And the people that we work with, and like we mentioned, we're not the ex we are not the experts, um, but we know that in-person connections and social gatherings can be exhausting. They can be overwhelming. Um, they can create a lot of feelings of anxiety, and so um, there are virtual connections. There's lots of different opportunities available virtually, and I'm sure most of us had an opportunity to experience some virtual connections over the past couple of years. Um, so please feel free to add in the chat other suggestions that aren't listed, but um, a couple ideas. You might look through old texts, notes, emails, messages from people that have supported you in your life or people that have made you feel good, made you smile. Um, you might watch, maybe you follow someone you've met um, in person, you followed their YouTube channel. So maybe you could go there and watch some of their YouTube videos or chat with them on there, watch a video or a movie that you've watched a hundred times, connect with the autistic community through an online chat. Um, I have an awesome Gino alumni participant that um, took the time to write up these resources for different social media apps available for the autistic community. And I know sometimes um, TikTok and Discord maybe aren't um, for you at this time in your life. Maybe you um, have had a negative experience with them, but it does seem like there are different things that you can kind of filter out um, within these apps to find positive virtual connections. Um, and one thing that I want to highlight on with TikTok is that um, this person men mentioned looking up specific hashtags. So hashtag actually autistic or searching hashtag neurodivergent talk. Um, they were able to find great hacks, relatable, relatable comedy and affirming um, discord. This person has had really great experiences with video and voice chats for increased accessibility. So, um, and I've also had a lot of um, positive experiences like searching these hashtags for myself just out of curiosity to see what's out there. And I think that there's a lot of um, really cool people that you can connect with around the world. Um, I recently had a parent reach out from the Netherlands about they found they came across GNO's Instagram page and they were like, wow, I wish that this kind of program was here for my daughter. And um, so just being able to find um, different blogs, podcasts, things like that. So moving on to this next sort of thread that runs through this is the art of saying yes. And what I want to encourage caregivers to do is to just say yes. When people offer to help, it can be an instinct to say no or to say that you don't need me. Oh, I'm good. I'm fine. Thanks for asking, but I'm fine. <laughs> I get that. I've done it many times. Um, and that can be because of a lot of reasons. Maybe you have this urge to be protective toward the person that you're caring for. You have guilt about imposing on others, a lack of trust. You just want things to stay private any number of reasons for why that may be. 
But the best thing you can do to move past those roadblocks is to just say yes when help is offered. Um, people feel really good when they help out, and so you should never feel bad about accepting their help. Recognize what your needs are, identify the people that you can rely on, and give yourself grace throughout this process. You're not alone, and you don't need to face this by yourself, so please do allow folks to help when you need it. That being said, I know that accepting help is hard and asking for help can be even harder. So I wanted to offer a few suggestions that make asking for help a little bit more um, approachable, I guess. So think ahead and give people time to prepare. prepare. Um, not everybody can just drop what they're doing and help you in the exact way that you want help when you need it. But if you know that you have a really busy week of appointments coming up or there's an anniversary of something traumatic ahead of you that you know you're just going to not have emotional capacity to take care of certain things during that time, give folks a heads up and let them get ready to help you in whatever way they can. Describe the situation. Tell people why you need help. I mean, very few people understand exactly what it's like to have the familial situation that I do. And so providing some of that context of, well, this is actually what it's like, and this is why I need your help. Um, I think that's a good thing. It can be really vulnerable and scary, and I get that, but I think that people want to know why, and they want to be there for you. Be specific and direct and explain exactly what you need from somebody because they're not going to know if you don't tell them. So if you have mountains of laundry piling up, tell somebody that you need help doing your laundry. If your kitchen is just like growing weird things, tell somebody that you would really, really like it if they came over and helped you clean it. I know, again, that that's like a vulnerable place to be to let people into your world and see how things, how hard things can get for you, but it's okay and they want to be there for you. Also, be realistic. Again, don't expect too much from someone else because like we've said many times at this point, we all have things going on all of the time. And so trade, you know, we're going to be trading off with our friends and family in these seasons of need and vulnerability. So recognize and be realistic that it might not always be the case that everybody who you want to help you can help you in the way that you want to be helped right when you want to be helped. But don't let that deter you from asking for help when you need it. And lastly, affirm your worth. Say yes to yourself. Yes, you can do these hard things. Yes, you have done many hard things. And yes, you will continue to face many challenges with grace and you're gonna overcome them. You're worthy of all the care you give to others. Please say yes to things that bring you joy and peace, even when it's hard to make time for them. And I want to affirm you, Stephanie actually shared these caregiver affirmations with me. And so I'm just gonna read a few of them. Um, you show up often when no one else does. You drop everything when you get a critical call to be with your care recipient. You are committed to your role. You are wise. You research and work diligently to understand all the options your care recipient has to live their best life. You are relentless. You face the tough questions and bring up the courageous conversations. You are human. Your life is valuable and so many people are counting on you, keeping your energy up and immunity optimal. The list goes on. You're a hard worker. You are part of the support system. You are enough. You are courageous. You are a problem solver. You are resilient. So if nobody is telling you those things, I'm telling you them. Please tell them to yourself. I'm going to share this after the presentation because I think it's so important to say yes to your own power. <laughs> oh, that's <flip> side. <laughs> the art of saying no. Um, it's okay to say no to people, and that can look a lot of different ways. It's so important to protect your energy. And so while you're saying yes to yourself, that might look like saying no to others, and that's totally okay. Um, you can wait on things, and so can they. So if you are getting a text message or a phone call or a voicemail, and you know that people are just trying to help, but you're like, I can't do this right now. That's okay. You do not have to respond. We live in this very, like, in the moment, rapid response time and culture. And I promise it's okay to take space and come back to that later. And you can even say something like, I just did not have the capacity. Thank you for waiting for my response. Um, you also don't have to go to in-person things that don't fill your cup. You don't have to go to a get together or a party or any kind of social gathering, even if it's been on your calendar for a long time, even if you desperately wanted to go, 
for months, but then in that moment, you just cannot do it. You should not feel guilty or feel any obligation to do those things. Likewise, a PTA group, a support group, an advisory council, anything that you feel like maybe you should be doing because of your caregiver role or your relationship to the disability community, you really don't have to do. You also don't have to talk about anything you don't want to talk about, whether that be your own well being, the well being of your child, their disability or diagnosis, anything at all going on in your life. It's really not anyone else's business anyway. And you should never feel guilt or obligation to discuss things that you don't want to talk about. All of that being said, remember the seasons of your life. And so there are going to be just as many yeses as there are noes. There are going to be seasons when you have to do a lot more of one than the other. And that's okay. That can change. Again, I'm in a season where I have removed myself from a lot of these sort of what feel like obligations now instead of things that lift me up. And I'm hoping that I will get back to a place where I want to go to these support groups and these different things. So now switching gears back to um, ideas and suggestions for neurodivergent individuals. It can be really hard to say yes. It can feel overwhelming or create anxiety to think about committing to a social event or social gathering, or even just thinking about leaving your house, leaving your safe place, whether it's your room or um, your family, your pet. It might feel uncomfortable to say yes to something that's new that you haven't been a part of before, or maybe you don't know anyone there. Um, I want to encourage you to pump yourself up to say yes. Um, some things you could say to yourself are, um, this is hard, but I can do it. This is tough, but so am I. I won't always feel this way. Um, if you're thinking, no, I just can't go. What if it's terrible? Try to think, no, what if this is so great? What if it's really fun? And what if I feel better after I go? So just try to challenge yourself to say yes sometimes. Um, there's different ways to say yes. Sometimes just thinking of um, how this can work within your own self-care plan and like within your own boundaries. Um, you might say, yes, I'll be there, but I'll step away for a long time or a break when I need it. Letting people know your needs and again, what will help you feel successful and be successful where you're at and where you're going, what you're doing. Um, you might say, yes, but I'm not ready to greet anyone with more than a wave or a smile. Um, and that's okay. You left the house. You said yes, and you went there. That's enough. Don't put, don't feel pressure to have a lot of conversations and then um, feel overwhelmed. Bring your STEM items and allow yourself to STEM or info dump. Share your interests. Tell people what you're excited about or what you're involved in. Be proud of yourself. Be proud of yourself for saying yes and for leaving your house and, or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to move this. So this is another thing that um, I think is so important um, to just realize and recognize that take one thing at a time to achieve what you can, even if it's half a thing. I thought that this watercolor artwork was so awesome um, because maybe you really connect with, and you have within your self-care plan is with your pet. I know I spend a lot of time with my dog and I was thinking about talking about this, but maybe we can do one thing today, half a thing, fine. Dear diary, today I got half dressed, half sat. And then his cat is the support person. Dear diary, today my friend started investing in himself again. One trouser leg at a time, how great. <laughs> so just remember that one thing at a time, even if it's getting half dressed um, or walking to the mailbox. And I think this is true for caregivers too. One of the most important things I've done for myself over the years is reframe things the way this cat has reframed <laughs> them. Um, little bits count, they add up and they do make a, a big difference. And then, um, so protecting yourself and Creating those boundaries for yourself um, within that self-care, what it looks like for you. Um, I often hear people that I'm working with say, like, thinking about how to respond is exhausting. Waiting too long to respond or um, saying no 
is exhausting, overwhelming, and that creates anxiety. So to help prevent that, you might um, come up with your own boundary setting responses, or you might have a list, create a list and have, save it somewhere with different ways you can say no. Um, and in GNO, we provide lots of different ways, conversation starters and tips for things um, like when you're feeling uncomfortable. So a couple of things on here, I can't do this, but I can help with that. Or I'm not comfortable having this conversation. Can we talk about something else? It's okay to say, sorry, I didn't message back. Um, I'm dealing with some heavy stuff in my mind right now. And sometimes responding to messages takes every bit of my energy and obviously reword that depending on the situation, but you could take that and rephrase it to match the situation. Um, protect your energy and recharge this holiday season. Um, for some examples of that might be limiting your social interactions, lower unpredictability. So know what to expect and avoid unwanted surprises. That might feel really hard. And you're like, how do I do that? Um, because my parents just make me go to these places or I'm forced to do this. Talk to somebody, find out who's going to be there and who can help you figure out a plan. You could um, find out like what food's going to be there. Can I bring a bag of my fidget items to use? Is there a place where I can take a break? Um, can I get a visual schedule of what the day or night's going to look like? Um, sometimes those unwanted surprises can feel really scary and overwhelming. Engage in your special interests. Um, so if it's not something that you're interested in, it's okay to say no. And then, as I mentioned, bring out your STEM or fidget items. Um, as needed to protect your energy and recharge with whatever you're doing. And I also want to say that we all um, agree that it's okay to just say no. Right. You don't have to have a reason, but sometimes, like even from our own personal experience, just saying no is hard. So this is a way to stop feeling like you have to justify yeah, your response, make it feel easier until you can get to a point where you feel comfortable just saying no. So, yeah. Um, so moving on to some simple habit shifts. Um, this is information that we think is helpful for anyone um, in order to just add little things um, little shifts into your life, um, to increase your self-care. Um, so really, I just want to start by saying that engaging in meaningful activities can increase your quality of life. So the things that you find meaningful, whatever that is for you specifically, the things that you enjoy doing and, um, you know, it doesn't, it might not feel like, oh, that's not really self-care, but stereotypical self-care, you know, there's no right or wrong there. Um, and to let go of the all, all or nothing mindset. So it can feel like doing, I need to do it, all the self-care ever, or I need to do it really consistently or never at all, or I need to do it a full day or a full hour, but really just minutes and pieces of your day and um, small areas where you can fit it in um, is still a step towards, you know, bettering yourself and making yourself feel cared for. Um, and so a good thing to do is to look into your routine, your daily routine, and see where you can fit in little bits of self-care, um, somewhere where it makes sense. So this next slide is um, an activity that you can come back and, um, or if you're watching this afterwards, you can pause and do or come back and do it later. Um, but looking at your routine and uh, listing it out or typing it out, your daily routine, start to finish, all the things you do. And then... Think of a preferred self-care activity, um, something that you used to do or you want to do or you've always wanted to try. And then looking at your um, list, where in your routine does that self-care fit? Where does it make sense? Um, can you break down that self-care into a small piece, something, um, you know, listening. I If you love reading books, but you you don't have, you feel like you can't sit down and read a book. Maybe you try audiobooks and you say, okay, every time I am doing the dishes, I'm going to listen to an audiobook. So you're kind of pairing those things together so that it makes sense and you just always do them together and then you're getting that self care. So attaching that 
desired um, self-care to a pre-existing part of your routine can make it feel more accessible and less like, I just don't have the time or I just, you know. Even listening to music. Yeah, listening to music, you can pair that with anything. So I encourage you to try this out sometime. And then these um, next couple slides um, are Instagram versus reality self-care edition. So um, like yoga, say that's one of your preferred self-care activities. The first one is our stretchy lady who um, has her, she's in her Zen zone with her candles and everything and it looks really peaceful. Um, and she might be there for an hour, who knows? Um, and then reality is like waking up and a quick stretch and a deep breath and that's can that's that can be your yoga and your yoga self-care um and this one here is cleaning which i know is not everyone's preferred self-care activity for some people that's like oh god <laughs> but for some people it makes you feel really good um so instagram is the perfect closet um and then reality is everything's in the closet, you know, it's, it's not where it, you want it to be, but you got it put away. And that's one step further than you were before. And it'll feel good. This is a good example of like different seasons of life. Mate. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I love all of Katie's reframes because I think that what the hardest thing to do is to let go of expectations that you've had for your life. And the biggest gift you can give yourself is to have let them go. Yeah. So agreed. Oh, this is for. Um, I think the pictures can be. Oh. <laughs> this is for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pardon me. The picture's throwing you off because it I, is throwing me you off. You can do it. So this is. I mean, I didn't practice this slide, but here we go. I can do this. I'm saying yes to myself. So I. Kind of in that same vein, um, what's another possibility? What are other things that I could do that are aligned with my values and my hobbies that might look differently than they used to, but that I can still fit in? I love this. What would the people who care about me say? I am so guilty of not taking my own advice. I can tell everybody else how to take care of themselves and I can mother the world, but if but I don't do that very well for myself often. And so really trying to look in the mirror metaphorically and say, well, what's someone else tell me to do? How can I, how can I do that? Um, if my friend had this thought again, what would I tell them? Same thing. Be intentional with your time. I think this is huge. Like something that was valuable to me that I knew I was neglecting was my physical self-care. And it's really hard to get to a gym or to go work out with a buddy or do those things that I would love to do, even to take a 30 minute walk around my block. But if I can intentionally say, you know what, I've got five minutes. And I know I can get X number of squats and sit-ups done in that time. It can be really condensed and it can still be really meaningful. Um, set realistic expectations. I am the worst at like blowing things up and do it, wanting that all or nothing. Like, oh, well, screw it. If I'm not going to be able to do the way I envision it, then I don't want to do it at all. But that's not helpful at all to anybody. Um, but if you can set realistic expectations, like I will do one thing today that brings me joy that could literally be smelling a candle like but being intentional with that taking the time having that realistic expectation of this is something that will take almost no time or effort but I know will have a positive impact I think is so important um, embrace the imperfect moments my life is nothing but imperfect moments and if I got caught up on the way a family photo turned out or the, how my kid dressed for school I would be a mess. But if I can look at something and find even the smallest bit of gratitude for something in that situation, it makes it completely turns the situation around. So I look at something imperfect and say, huh, what do I like about that? And it's a really easy time. Um, it doesn't take any time to flip yeah. your flip your thought like that. Sit in your car a little longer. I love this. It's okay to just take like tiny little chunks of time for yourself too. So I do this. I will just come home and be like, you know what? I'm not quite ready. Not quite ready. I know my kids are safe and taken care of. I will give myself two more minutes to finish this song that I love or to get to the end of the chapter in this audiobook or whatever it may be. Yep. How'd I do for not having it? <laughs> so great. And I think I want to add this to this slide because I think that they're both um, related. Um, 
so many of the self-care lists say like journal or share, write three things you're grateful for. And I'm sure at the end of this, we include that in some shape or form. But I do think reflecting at the end of the day on what was one thing that brought me joy today. And you might think about that candle you smell, mm-hmm. but in the moment, you're not even realizing that that is the positive thing from mm-hmm. your day, but just recognizing one thing. Um, so, a mental journal. A mental yeah. journal. Yeah. And, and some of it helpful to tell one other person to, like speaking it out loud can sometimes be. Mm-hmm. And helpful. some people will do like the peak or the pit of your day or that. Yeah. What's another? I can't remember all the names of them, but so other simple habit shifts that um, you can incorporate into your day and your week are just adding positive supports. And we're going to share some examples um, over the next few slides, but challenging negative self-talk statements. Um, and I, we have some examples to share with that, but those mean like, oh, I'm never going to get this done. Say, so, like, I can do this. This is hard, but I'm going to get it done. Um, re- Repeating positive affirmations or thoughts. I am brave. I am confident. Um, I think having, there's different apps you can get that can like change positive affirmations daily to like remind you of like, you can do this. You are confident. You are beautiful. You matter. Um, And then identifying your safe things, which we're going to have a bunch of examples on another slide. But with this, um, checklist at the top is just a visual of something to add it's a positive thing of like um just checking off things you're doing each day not what you're not doing but focusing on just one thing you did like did you pick out your clothes did you brush your hair that's one thing um did you go to school today did you talk to someone today so these are just different things that you can add into your day it doesn't have to be typed you can write it it can be in a note in your phone um be creative. You can use your artistic skills to doodle and draw pictures. It doesn't have to be words. Um, I love that about the girls I work with. Um, I said something one time, like, don't let's save the doodles and just write words. And they were like, no, because some people (laughs) only like to express themselves with doodles or pictures and I was like thank you for calling me out you're right (laughs) so stuff like that is just so important to be reminded of and recognize um and then just thinking about what is helpful for you in order for you to go somewhere or participate in something use your confident voice verbally or write it down on paper um email it text it to let people know what will help you be most successful with where you are at and what you are doing. Um, If you're gonna be with a bunch of people you don't know, a bunch of neurotypical people, a bunch of uh, neurodivergent people, adults, um, help them understand. So some things like um, encouraging them to listen to understand and to support you. Um, asking for like, Hey, I need more time to process these questions. So I might not respond right away. Or can I think about this and I'll respond later, but maybe a lot of people will just expect or assume you're going to respond right away. Mm -hmm. Um, we expect a lot of times in just in the world in general, we expect everyone to be on a neurotypical perspective and mm-hmm. take the neurotypical perspective, but when really it's, it goes both ways. And I think encouraging neurotypical people in your life to take your perspective mm-hmm. and to understand where you're coming from can just create an all around better, more inclusive and accepting environment for everyone. Different perspectives. And I'm trying to be thoughtful about my words here. Cause it's like, you don't know what you don't know. Um, recently in groups we've started creating like the ground rules for the group and like um a couple things that that they've taught me and shared me is like they've said hey approach my differences with curiosity versus judgment like and then just I can't emphasize enough you don't know what you don't know so ask um and don't assume yeah so lots okay and then um 
So know what you need is so important. Let people in your life know what you need. Take some time to think about it and be thoughtful. How can you be successful? What helps you be successful in the different environments, different places that you're going with those people? So some things um, that you could add into your life, into your daily routine, use communication cards, wear earplugs or headphones, um, plan to leave early, ask for accommodations, ask for those supports. And then I think it's important to um, identify like your safe foods and uh, keeping those things that help, that make you feel supported close. What are your comfort set, scents? What are your, who are your comfort people or animals? Um, let people know so they can they can share that and support you. Um, where are your comfort places? Those are some things you could talk about and also help with like planning um, group activities or you could offer suggestions like, hey, maybe we should go here because this is a place I find comforting. Um, I think that's important to to know what what are your safe things, even just for yourself and for your for your family, for your bubble, for your circle of people. And then this is um, an adapted version of what Katie talked about earlier, about um, maybe later you can go back and look at these slides and get a piece of paper and write your routine and what you're doing and to add in those self-care things. But we find it super valuable to individualize support throughout the groups that I work with. And there's a ton of um, research that does support maintaining your routines is helpful for your own self care and well-being. So thinking about what do you do in the morning? What do you do in the evening? And having that visual just to look at and help you remember one thing, even if it's just put it on your mirror, put it on your door next to your bed. But even if it's just remembering to change your underwear, it's doing one thing for yourself. Um, like putting on lotion. That's something that a lot of people might, might forget. Um, so you could create these different things. Be creative. You can draw them, make them on the computer, mm -hmm. make a note in your phone. But just having that somewhere where you go every day to see it is helpful. And then I feel like I've been talking a lot. <laughs> um, so I catch myself apologizing for so many things. And if you really think about what you apologize for throughout the day, you don't need to be sorry. Um, stop apologizing. Instead of saying, I'm sorry, I'm late. I'm sorry, I always mess up. Say, thank you for waiting for me. Thank you for being patient. Instead of saying, I'm sorry for talking about my problems so often say, thank you for listening to me. Um, you don't always have to be sorry. There's other examples on here, but um, I, I want to shout it from the rooftops yeah. too for, for parents and caregivers. Yeah, this too. this like, is for everybody. Everybody. Cause same thing. I'm like, oh gosh, I'm sorry. I'm always going on and on yeah. about my kid. Like, no, thank you so much for allowing me to the, unload the space <laughs> because I really needed this and you're a great friend. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just a reminder to that we forget. Mm -hmm. I do it all the time. So we're nearing the end of our presentation and we did our best to kind of give you some tools and resources that are quick and easy, practical, reasonable, um, that you find efficient, that you can actually incorporate into your lives for self-care. These are some actual exercises that I wanted to share with you too. And I also have a handout that includes these four as well as a, a few more um, that I just love to have in my personal toolbox because I find myself in times of very heightened anxiety or stress or emotional turmoil. And when I recognize those moments and I don't feel like I have a tool to grasp onto, I feel really untethered and really unsafe, emotionally unsafe. And then that can sometimes translate into feeling like I'm not providing the best quality of care for my child. Um, and so I think that these are powerful tools. I hope that you find them useful, but again, please just take what you need and I would love your feedback on these too. So I'll just share them quickly with you. One that I learned from a psychologist that I saw both at St. Louis Children's Hospital from that perspective and then ended up working with professionally um, is gratitude for the hands. 
Look at your hands. Just take a moment to look at them. What have they done for you today? What have they done for others today? How did they allow you to access your world? How did they allow you to show compassion to others? Gaze upon them fondly, give them a gentle, quick massage, and thank them for all they've done for you today and all the ways that they have served you and served others. I feel better. You just put me in the back. I feel it's so relaxing. It's so, good, so relaxing. A simple grounding technique that I have used in times of just really acute stress is I take one big breath and then I do this five, four, three, two, one countdown of five things you can see, four things you can touch, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. And this is just a fast sensory way of getting very in touch with your immediate environment and pulling yourself back to the present because as caregivers, we have we many of us can have this tendency to get either caught in past worries or grief or anxieties or freak out about the future and what's to come for our children or ourselves. And that's not, neither of those is a helpful place to be. So how can you get back to right here in this moment and be who you need to be for your loved one right then and there? And this is a quick way to kind of rein you back in. I also love to reframe my negative thoughts of which I have many. So <laughs> it's natural, it's normal, it's human. It's one of those normal human things that Mal talked us through at the very beginning of this presentation. It's not like they're not going to happen, but when they start to creep in, how can you reframe them? And so you're being the helpful person that you need to be and not getting stuck in that negative place. So the first, and you don't have to try all of these. These are three different ways that you could go for a reframe. So instead of um, shooting for positive instead of negative, go for realistic instead, because the opposite of negative isn't necessarily positive. It's just realistic. Think about your situation realistically and focus on that. Another option would be to switch from asking, is this true to, is this helpful? So we don't want to think of our thoughts as either true or false, but maybe helpful or not helpful. Trying to be more utilitarian in our approach. Like if I am trapped in this negative spiral of thought and I'm having the same intrusive bad thought over and over and over again, is that doing anything good for anybody? Nope. Doesn't mean that it it's okay that it went there, but I can send it on its way and realize that it's not helpful right now. It might also not be true. Start fact-checking yourself. What proof do you have for that negative thought? There really might not be any. You might just be operating on anxiety and stress and overwhelm and emotion. And so really starting to reanalyze, like, do I even have proof for this in the first place? And the last one I'm going to let Katie share because she brought this to us, actually, and I love it. Yeah, so... Uh, five finger breathing. If you um, haven't heard of it before, um, it's a breathing exercise. And as we know, breathing is one of those things that we all do every day. <laughs> um, but it's can be, it's one of the simple things that can be so effective in um, really bringing you and bringing you back and um, letting you take a moment. So you just hold out one hand and separate your fingers. And then as you, you will trace every finger of your hand and on the ups, you'll take a deep inhale. Stephanie, and then, let me see you do it. <laughs> on the downs, <laughs> you'll exhale. And so you just continue as you go through each finger and see if you can let it. And maybe it doesn't do anything, but you tried. <laughs> you tried something new today. Woohoo. Thank you, Kate. I love it. Thank yeah. you. Okay. And there might be something on this slide might work for you, or you might look at it and say, nope, nothing's going to work <laughs> for me on this slide. But I encourage you to just try. You don't know what you don't know. And instead of thinking that won't work, try thinking, okay, what if this does work? And what if it does help? So um, just a few ideas. Instead of to do, um, I know a lot of people probably make to-do lists things they need to get done that can be overwhelming so replace that with today I so today I reserved some alone time today I took a break from social media today I walked outside and that was one that we all talked about like Katie walked outside today <laughs> it was big I mean the trash can but sometimes like this season of life can be really there can be a lot of lows and you can feel down a lot mm -hmm. no matter whatever is going on um, okay. And then this one, write down three reasons why you are amazing. Stick them on your bathroom mirror or near your bed. Oh yeah. That's just one. So write down those things. Like 
think about why you are amazing because you are. And then if you look back at that, when you're like down or having a rough day, like, yes, you're right. I'm this. And this. sometimes it's just a helpful reminder because it's difficult to remind yourself on your own. Um, stretch your body. Just sometimes like if you're feeling frazzled or irritable, just stretch your, or sh- yeah, shake it up, stand it up, up, take the stairs, mm-hmm. um, declutter a space or rearrange your room. I got some awesome tips and tricks that some of the girls in my group last night were sharing that they do. So I thought this was a great idea. They said sometimes they just feel like moving some pictures or posters on their wall to a new place or taking them down for that time in their life is helpful and just refreshing. Um, find a song that makes you feel like a bright, sparkly rainbow. <laughs> Listen to your favorite song when you need it or put your favorite song on repeat. Sometimes that song can just lift you up and put you in that mood. Make you I know Mel's favorite right now. Feel a little <laughs> jazzed. Hi, it's me who likes, I don't know if anyone likes Taylor Swift. <laughs> not the same. And then we so did you, listen to that before this. That it, it pump, yeah, pumped us up. And then social media specific. I know for a lot of um, young individuals, adolescents, young women, sometimes social media can be a lot, but just know that it's okay to block people who make you feel unhappy or uncomfortable unfollow accounts that have a negative impact on your mind and your body, your overall mental health, turn off notifications as needed, unplug when you need to, and mute accounts if you need a break. You can do all those things in your settings or delete an app. Um, Lots of new features to help with those things. Okay, so we're getting to the end of our presentation. Um, but these are a few really awesome resources that I encourage you to just look up one day. We'll share this with you, but these, the first two are, um, podcasts and bloggers and Lauren Ober. I don't know if you're familiar with her, but she's hilarious neurodivergent individual shares her experience as an adult and talks about her late diagnosis with autism and her experiences leading up to that diagnosis and then how um, dealing and interacting with neurotypical individuals has been a part of her life. It's She's amazing. Um, Catherine May has an amazing website with a ton of helpful links. Um, she has books and I can personally recommend her book, Wintering. I just for, ordered that. For anybody, yeah. I read it in a very dark place in my life last I, year and fabulous. So if you go to her webpage, these are linked when um, Stephanie sends this out, but she does have a list of all of her books and I think a new one is coming out. And then I recently found this by searching a hashtag, um, actually autistic. I think I was searching actually autistic females and this Instagram account popped up and it's by Marina Stevens. She shares everyday portraits and personal stories of autistic women and girls who were either recently diagnosed or late diagnosed people in their teens, um, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. And it's amazing to see their um, their stories. They share their, their personal journeys on each post. And then an amazing Gina alumni that I mentioned earlier um, wanted things that um, has recommended this to a lot of people that I work with, Project Pride. I've included the Instagram account and the web page, but there's a lot of um, different things. I'm not going to read all of this, but that, <laughs> that you could look into as a, a support group to get connected with. Um, and then for caregivers and parents, I'll let sure, we'll yeah. share more on this. Um, this is your baby. <laughs> Yeah, a couple of years ago, I started a caregiver wellness initiative that I call Carewell Collaborative, and you can find us on Instagram at Carewell Collaborative. Been inactive for a while, and that is again due to some of those reasons that I like needed to just protect my space. And I, my daughter had a lot of healthcare stuff, but I think that there's some good information on there. A lot of it is stuff that I've shared in here too. So I encourage you to check that out or connect with me if you would like more resources. And don't forget to subscribe to the Kansas Land YouTube channel because that's where this 
presentation will go after so you can watch it every season every year <laughs> no but where you can find all of the other monthly um, family education series presentations and talks lots of good information my very favorite thing in the world girls night out um Remember, we all have things to work on. That There's my contact, my email, mbeckloff at kumc.edu, our Facebook, GNO account, and our webpage. Um, if you search GNO Connections, the hashtag on Instagram, um, slowly but surely mm -hmm. trying to go viral. <laughs> <laughs> and then just a few QR codes about, um, you can find out more about supporting the GNO program in our community as well as our wish list, We have a huge wait list of um, individuals waiting between the ages of nine and 28 years old. So no, you're good. Um, but you can go back and click those and it takes a, takes you to uh, like our webpage and um, where you can find things that we're doing out in the community. And then, yeah, let's burn some references. And we have a ton of handouts that we've sent to Stephanie later than when she asked we missed the deadline of when we were supposed to send them so you all should get those soon and um we can share our emails in the chat if you guys have any follow-up questions or want us to expand on anything or yeah share. i just i just want to remind everybody um if your camera is on and the slides are down, you are going to show up on Facebook if you say anything. So I want to let you know that um, to turn your camera off if you don't want to show up on Facebook. Um, but I get sorry. I'm so impressed with, I don't know if it's mom and daughter, but for staying on this whole time. Thanks for being <laughs> patient with us. And yeah, so there were a couple of comments and a question on um, Facebook. One is, um, you had talked about the peer-to-peer, -peer, um, Nicole, with Families Together and Missouri Family to Family. There's also um, uh, supporting you through KDHG is another option as well. Um, so you can um, uh, get connected, supporting you, KDHG. Um, I can send that website along when I send out the, or you can just Google supporting you KDHE, um, that should come up as well. So there's that option. Um, one question from our friend, Jesse, um, what if you really want to try to go to a loud place like a gym, but you don't like loud noises? So um, really? I, it's a great question and it's definitely, we're challenging. Yeah, we work with that a lot. Um, so I, a few suggestions that I would make um, would be to um, know how, like, do you have, can you be in that space for increments of time um, and then take a break and know when you need that break? Or are there, um, there's girls we have that come to GNO who will wear their headphones um, because that makes them, um, feel supported in those times. Um, so if there's something like headphones or earplugs or things like that. Going there, going to the gym, maybe at an off time when you could maybe connect with someone, ask, um, I don't know if you want any recommendations, but we have partnered with multiple fitness centers and gyms across the community, across Kansas and Missouri, um, that there are people that, um, have experience adapting things and supporting these needs so we can we can provide those places and you can go and talk to them and um, find out the times when it maybe won't be as loud or um, see if they're willing to turn down the music if that was yeah if that's it's keeping it loud people are more willing to do those things than you might think and just they just I, don't realize it another thing that we just really encourage and challenge um, is bring your headphones, your earplugs, whatever works. But then I think slowly, like the more comfortable you get going and the more um, like exposure you have there, you might only need your headphones for a part of the time or you can um, go outside for a few minutes to take a break and then go back in and, and eventually feel more comfortable with the noise. But I think like a lot of times when we go places, We'll say like, hey, can you turn down the music? 
And that's something that most places are more than happy to do. But then also um, just talking to people about like, hey, does anyone have experience with this? Can anyone help support me? And it can be really hard to do by yourself. So you could even write an email, write a letter, write a note, um, have someone go with you. Because I know building up those self-advocacy skills are, it, it takes a lot. And, but you're confident, you're brave. You can do it. You got this. We all have things to work on. So I want to share a couple of self um, cares that I have done um, in the past. One is um, I have a jar that when something good happens to me throughout the year, I put it on um, a note card and then I put it in the jar. And then New Year's Day, me and my son, and I don't just do myself when Matthew, my son Matthew has something good happen to him. I write it down on a card and I put it in there. And then on New Year's Day, we go back and read all of them. I love that. All the good things that happened over the year. So we start out like 2023, we're going to start it out on a good note because we're reading all of these good things that happened to us over the 2022 <laughs> you know, just leave all the bad things in, in 2022 and, and forget about them and move forward in 2023 with the positive things. Awesome. Um, do what? That's really cool. I love that. Yeah. And another thing is if you get kudos from friends or work um, coworkers or whoever, you also put them in a jar or save them in an email folder if they're in emails or wherever, or print them off. And then when you're having a bad day, you just go through and it's not you telling yourself you're amazing and you're wonderful and all this. It's Mallory and Nicole sending me emails saying, Stephanie, you're amazing. You're awesome. You know, um, or how thankful. Um, and you just save those. And like when you're having that dark period or a dark day, you go back and read it and you're like, you know what? I love my teammates. My coworkers are amazing too. So um, and remember to give those things out too. self-care isn't just all about receiving. It's about giving like, um, Nicole has said earlier. So make sure you're giving out those kudos to, to, um, your coworkers and your friends too. So they can feel good about themselves as well. Mm -hmm. So does anybody on here have any questions? I don't see any more on Facebook. One thing I wanted to say, um, what you were saying you and Matthew do Stephanie with new year's. I think mean, it's never too late to start because I had wanted, I think I saw that idea somewhere, but I'm like, Hey, you could do that now for this hard, these hard seasons coming up or like this holiday season that can be stressful. And then even have two months mm -hmm. of positive things to look at. Yeah. You can always start at any time. You don't have to wait until January. Um, I, I think the first time I ever did it was mid year. So definitely start it whenever. And I love and this about just dance, mm -hmm. uplifting your spirits. I think that's, it's a great, nothing like some movement, especially dancing. That's so fun. I love it. I always listen to music when I'm um, cooking because mm -hmm. I can't see the TV anyway. So it's like, I'm listening to music and I'm dancing and, and poor Murray tonight was like rolling his eyes at me. Yes. Murray's her dog. <laughs> 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 Does anybody else have any thoughts, ideas that they they do, they want to share? Anything they, they want to try? Anything you're excited about trying? Cool. I will say, you know, this, this is perfect timing for this um, session because we are going into the holidays and for some holidays are really hard, um, whether you know, this is going to be your first holiday without a family member, or you just have experiences, or it's just rush, rush, rush. You're, you know, constantly have something planned every single night and you're just overwhelmed and tired. Mm -hmm. And then, oh yeah, you're supposed to be shopping and wrapping presents and all that stuff too, which um, sometimes we're doing that at three o'clock in the morning, um, Christmas Eve. So first of all, give yourself leeway and give yourself credit like Nicole said earlier and um, take that time whether it's 15 minutes or whatever to yourself this holiday season and and really just sit back and you know I'm not gonna lie my Christmas tree is up already mm -hmm. it only has the lights on 
Um, I don't put ornaments until my son comes home, but I don't care that people are like, oh, Stephanie, just let have Thanksgiving first. I, one of the things that this Christmas tree brings to me is just joy. When I wake up at four o'clock in the morning and I'm sitting there drinking my tea and my Christmas tree lights are on, it brings me happiness and it brings me self-care. So I don't care what people say. Um, I will still have Thanksgiving and I enjoy that too. You are. Um, but yes, I have my Christmas tree up already. Like Christmas commercials and music, it just makes you jolly. But it's okay if you hate Christmas yeah. or you don't celebrate. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Self-care is individualized. as yeah. And yeah. sometimes what, you, what worked for you one week is not going to work the next week. And just, yes, that's something like, yeah, it's important to try, have a tool belt, toolbox of different yeah. things. Toolbox, like, absolutely. Yeah. Hard so, But thank you all thank so, you much. so much. I know it's like kind of ironic that we spent an hour and a half chatting your ear off virtually when we're trying to tell you to take care of yourself. So I hope that you <laughs> gain something. Or share this tonight, with friends but... and family who need it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. And you too. SG. Yes. And we're um, next year, we've got some great new topics coming. So be watching uh, for those and have a great night. Enjoy the rest of your year. Enjoy any of your holidays whichever you celebrate. So thank you all. Have a great evening. Take care of yourself this season. <laughs> I know. Bye, Becky. Bye. Did you know Becky? Miranda? No. I can't